Hi friends and welcome to the third annual Read Your Bookshelf Challenge. Now I started this challenge two years ago um, when I realized I had a lot of books on my shelves that I wanted to read uh, but kind of needed a little bit of a push for and this kind of has evolved over time. Um, I've invited other people to do this along with me and it's been a lot of fun. A few little notes before we start. It is called the Read Your Bookshelf Challenge, but you are more than able to go to the library, get out books from there to fulfill the prompts. This is a very loose challenge. It's supposed to be for fun. It's kind of supposed to push you out of your element a little bit. At the same time, just help you enjoy reading. Um, so I have a variety of prompts, one for each month of the year. And what I like to do is I like to do giveaways. Um, I just have a lot of fun giving away books because then people get to expand their library and maybe pick up some books that are favorites of mine. So here's what we're going to do for this year. There is going to be actually two giveaways. The thing that I've been doing since the beginning is I do a $100 gift card to your um, book shop of choice. Within reason, I have to be able to purchase the gift card where I am. Um, so it's a $100 US US dollar gift card. So I do that draw in January. Um, so if you're going to want to be entered into that, so I'll be doing January's from the last year and then the 2022 giveaway will be in January of 2023 um, is when I do it so that people have all year to join in. So I'm going to have the exact details on how to join below. But what it is, is you're going to be going on to the website Hey Reader that my husband made for me. And there it has all the challenges and I will be um, picking the winner through there at the end of the year or beginning of next year. In addition, there's that nice big giveaway, but we have to wait a whole year for that. So I thought, let's do another giveaway. I'm going to be giving away a book a shirt. So I don't know if you can see my book stack shirt here. Um, I want to give one of these away. So either you can get a sweater or a t-shirt. Um, and all you have to do to enter to win is comment below with the book stack emoji. Um, only book stack emoji comments will be entered into this giveaway. You can put other comments in here about other things, but those won't be, um, you won't be entered unless you have the book stack and only one comment, one book stack comment per person. Um, yeah, so that's the giveaway stuff. Now we are going to get into the prompts. So like last year, what I'm going to be doing is sharing the prompt for the month, which I'm holding very loosely. If, if you think that you have a book that kind of fulfills that prompt and it's a little bit farther out there than what I had originally said, I'm okay with that. I, I really don't care. And if you go to put in a book on Hey Reader and that particular cover doesn't have that item, that's also fine. This is just kind of to build a community of readers, um, all kind of reading similar-ish books each month. I try to make the prompts non-genre specific. Um, I want them to be broad enough that anyone can join, um, no matter what kind of books you enjoy. So I have one prompt for each month, so let's get into those. And what I'm going to be doing is um, sharing a couple books, probably about two that are on my TBR, and then about one recommendation. There's a few exceptions uh, to this. There's sometimes where I can't really give you a recommendation because it's different for everyone, uh, but we'll get into this. So for January, the prompt is quiet, um, but not necessarily quiet. It is a book that has a quiet word in the title. So I have um, two different books here that are on my TBR that I might choose for January. They're both quiet, have a quiet word. So we've got the silent patient. So silent, I thought that worked. Um, so I've got this one. And I also have veiled in smoke. I figured the word veiled sounds like a quiet word. You could also use um, something like the word still, um, anything quiet and a recommendation that I have has a different word that I think works as well. And my recommendation is Echoes Among the Stones by Jamie Jo Wright. This one is a dual timeline um, historical fiction book. And I think Echoes, it could be like a loud echo, but I think in this particular instance, it's a, it's a quiet echo. Um, yeah, so this is my recommendation for January. Then for February, we're gonna go for the Valentine kind of theme. And this year we are going to be having a a book that has the word love in the title. Now, not all of these prompts are title specific. I think about half of them are. Um, I tried to 
not just too title specific. There's a whole buzzword readathon uh, for that. Um, but I wanted some title specific and some other things. So you'll notice as we go along. So the first one um, that is on my TBR is Love Where You Live. This one is actually a nonfiction book. I think maybe one out of two of my nonfiction books on this list. This subtitle is How to Live Scent in the Place You Called Home. You call home. So we've got the word love there. Then another book on my TBR, uh, this one's actually a reread for me, is Redeeming Love by Francine Rivers. So you could also do like loving or lover. You can expand on the word love. It just so happens that the books that I have here all actually just have love in them. And then a recommendation. This is like coming off of like this book, which is kind of like historical fiction, whatever. Um, I've got Love That Dog. This is a middle grade free verse novel and I don't know it's just a cute little story it's really short um, so I wanted to recommend this one then for March we are going to be using the word growth as kind of like our indicator here um, so it could have the word like grow or growth in the title that's fine it could um, have something growing on the cover that also works or it could just be a book where growth takes place. So two that are on my TBR here, I've got The Language of Flowers. So there's flowers on the cover, I figured they're growing, that one works. Uh, this one is about a girl that ages out of foster care or aging out of foster care. Really would like to get to this one. And then um, another one I was thinking would work for this is um, pretty much any of these books, but I've got All Things Bright and Beautiful by James Harriet. Uh, this he was a vet in England years ago and I figure since there's a lot of like birth I'm assuming of since he's a vet that would kind of go with growth and then two recommendations I've got two classics here uh, The Secret Garden if you haven't read The Secret Garden yet this one actually would work for an upcoming prompt as well uh, but this one is all about Mary and how she gets this garden growing so that one works and then dropped a book again classic. Um, Anne of Green Gables. I mean, this is about her growth as a person, but also how she grows into um, Matthew and Marilla's lives. So I think that one works as well. Then I always just have to not intentionally pick a really hard prompt. Um, actually, I think someone suggested this. A few of these were actually suggested to me. I got also a few suggestions that have been prompts previous years, and I didn't want to pick a reuse a prompt yet I might in the future but for the third year I wanted to do all new prompts um, but this one is a book with your initials in the title and now here's where you can make it easier or harder on yourself you could just do your first name last name you could do your first middle last name which is what I was doing and so my initials are C A D K and do you know how hard it is to find those in a title it's actually quite hard I found one book off of my TBR that had those and that is Never Come Back by David Bell. I think this one is a thriller suspense story. I don't know anything about it but I looked and I looked and I looked and I like just happened to glance at this one. I was like yes finally I could not. I was having such a hard time finding one. And then there are two um, from my red shelf that I would recommend. These are two favorites of mine. So I was very excited to find my initials on here. Actually, I'm just double checking, make sure they actually, yes, okay. Uh, the first one is The Murder of Roger Ackroyd. This is still one of my favorite Agatha Christie books. Um, so this one has all of my initials. Obviously, this is just a general book recommendation. Uh, your initials may or may not be in this one. It may not be a good one for this prompt, but I would love everyone to read that one. And then I have The Reckoning at Gossamer, Gossamer Pond by Jamie Jo Wright. Um, I was also excited to find my initials in this one because this is another favorite of mine. This is my favorite first Jamie Jo Wright I ever read and it just like sucked me in and made me want to read all of her books which I have now done. So my apologi apologies to those of you who have harder initials yeah, that might be a hard one, um, especially if you want to do like first, middle, last name. My son also has two middle names and his initials, we were looking around, his were pretty hard and uh, my daughter has only one middle name, but it's very unique 
like not unique um but just she has no vowels so that makes it difficult and then my foster son has two middle names and two last names and i bet you i couldn't even find one that would work for him because it's he's just got too many obscure letters but i don't think i could find them all in a title uh so i'm curious to hear which books you guys choose for that prompt because i think it would be very interesting to know um the next one what month are we on to here um, in May, we are going to be reading a new to you author. So I went off of my TBR shelf, which is now a disaster because I had to pull out like a ton of books for this. Um, and I picked out two that are on there that I'm excited to read, curious about, and have never read from these authors before. Um, so the first one is Lady Jane or Janie Disappears. I've heard that name both ways, so I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, this is by Joanna Davidson Pol Politano? I don't know. Um, this one sounds intriguing to me. I don't actually remember why, but I've got this one on my list. And I also have Dune. Um, I've never read any Frank Herbert, so obviously the books that you have on this for me are going to be different because your unread authors are going to be different than mine. So I didn't have any specific recommendations, but um, I think that will be at least an easy month after, after coming off of April when things were maybe a little bit more difficult to find a book for. Now for June, I thought this was going to be an easy prompt. And then I started looking and then it was a lot harder than I thought. So the prompt for June is to read a book that has books or a book on the cover. Um, and I thought as a bookish person, this would be so easy, but I couldn't find much. Um, so I've got, I have this one out from the library right now, The Diary of a Bookseller. I actually really don't like this cover. I don't like this art style, but there's books on there. So there's that one. Um, and then I have Pages & Co, The Lost Fairies. This one actually doesn't have books, but it has pages of books. So like I'm saying, I'm keeping this really loose. So that would totally work. And by the time June comes around, I might have other books that actually have books on the cover that I might actually want to read. Um, and then a suggestion is the first book in the series here. This is the book Wanderers. This one actually does have a book on it. Um, yeah, I thought this would be easier. Another recommendation that I will give that I don't own is a book called Book Love. I'm pretty sure that book has like a stack of books on it and a girl reading a book. Um, if you are a bookish person, that is something I highly recommend. That is such a sweet book where you will just like feel like someone's just been spying on you. It's, it's awesome. Now for July, we are heading into books that you want to read but like kind of have been actively avoiding. So this is really good if you have a shelf of books I mean, I have quite a few. I put up a video recently sharing a bunch of books that I want to have at least tried by my birthday and, you know, either quit them and get rid of them or actually read them. Um, but I picked out two different ones that have been on my TBR cart, which you can't actually see. It's just kind of off to the side there. They've been on there for a while. Um, so I've got Outbreak. I think this one is a suspense story about a like pandemic or outbreak, obviously. It says on cover. Um, which sounds so interesting. I don't know why I haven't read this one. And then this one is a sequel and it is Safik. So this comes after Incarceron. It's like a YA steampunky kind of feel to it. And I enjoyed the first book and it's been what, eight, nine months since I read it or something crazy like that. And I still haven't read book two. And then this isn't really a recommendation, but a book that I had been putting off that I finally read and then like so enjoyed was The Host. I heard about this one last fall. Everyone was recommending it to me and I only picked it up this fall and I just, I really enjoyed this one. So it's kind of like motivation that sometimes we think that we're gonna not enjoy a book maybe as we don't pick it up, but then it can surprise you. So that's my encouragement for that one. For August, we are going for a book with a body part in the title. I thought this was gonna be a lot easier to find than I, I don't know, it was, it was harder than I thought. Um, but I have Heart of the West by O. Henry. Um, I, I think these are just like Western stories. I don't really know what this is. Um, I got it at a thrift store because someone had mentioned a different book by O. Henry. And I don't know, I kind of like the old timey look. So that one is a possibility for me. My other possibility is Sister Eve, Private Eye. Um, this is a Divine Private Detective Agency mystery. I got this in a mystery box of 10 books a while ago, and this was one of the more interesting ones that I wanted to try out of there, and I still haven't, so those are the two on my 
potential stack. And then a recommendation is The Case of a Left-Handed Lady. Uh, this is actually book two in the Enola Holmes series. I'd recommend reading book one first. It's, I think they should be read in order. Um, but book one didn't have a body part and I couldn't find books. On, I'm sure there are books on my shelf that have body parts, but I couldn't, I couldn't actually find any. So that was my recommendation. Now on to September. September, we are going for a collection. Now take this as you want it. It can be a collection of short stories. It can be a collection of poetry. However you want to define collection, go ahead and take that. Um, two of my possible options are, I've got a poetry collection here by William Wordsworth. Um, that's pretty straightforward. And then I also recently picked up uh, Modern British Short Stories. So this is a collection of British short stories. And I want to start on this one at least. For the collection, it's okay if you don't finish the collection. If you just want to read like a short story or two, that's okay with me. Um, and then a recommendation. I recently read this one. This is The Sweet Life, Reflections on Home and Garden. And this is just a, really, this one is like, the definition of a collection because it's just a collection of quotes and poems and a variety of things um, that talk about home and garden. Moving on to October. When I was looking at my pile of books, there was one word that kept coming up over and over again. And so I decided this word has to be an option. So for October, we are doing a book with the word secret or secrets in the title. Um, I picked up two books off of my TBR, but I think I actually had like four of them on there. Uh, so the first one, this one I really want to read. This is Secrets of a Charmed Life by Susan Meisner. And I really did enjoy her other historical fiction that I read, As Bright as Heaven. And like, honestly, I really want to read this one because of this dress. I would just love a dress like this. Um, so that's one of my secret books. The other one is a reread for me. This is The Secret Lives of Sergeant John Wilson. This is a book I had to read in grade 12. Um, and it is a true story of love and murder. It is about a Canadian RCMP officer who came from England, settled down, got a mistress, and then his wife moved out here and he killed her. And it's very local to where I live and we had to read this in grade 12 and then we had to go to the ditch where they found his wife's body and I had to read a poem that I wrote there. Um, and there is a video somewhere out in this world unless it's been, you know, taped over because days of VHS. There is a video of me reading this poem in this random Saskatchewan ditch. Um, it was kind of a bit of a morbid, you know, task, but now I really want to reread this. And then a recommendation is another book too, unfortunately, but it is The Secrets of Winter House. Uh, this is a middle grade story about um, a hotel called Winter House and our main character, I just really like her. She likes writing lists and um, they kind of like stumble across, yeah, different secrets. And like this peekaboo cover, I just, I don't know. I really enjoyed this whole trilogy. So recommend it to anyone who hasn't read it yet. For November, this one was actually, I know, I, this one specifically was recommended by Tiffany from Beautiful Minutia um, because her recommendation was read something, a book that makes you cozy or nostalgic. And because that is kind of the vibes I'm feeling this November, I thought this needs to be next year's November. Um, so I have two books that I might read for this. I have A Jane of Lantern Hill, which is an L.M. Montgomery story. I actually don't know anything about it other than that I just want to read all of the L.M. Montgomery. And then another book that I picked up is Agatha Christie. Poirot investigates. Honestly, any Agatha Christie just kind of gives me like cozy vibes. So those two are potential options for me. And then a recommendation would be Little Women. This one is a really excellent December read, but it just really has those cozy vibes that I think would work really well for November as well. And it just kind of has those like winter themes. If you live somewhere where I do, like where I do, where we have snow already, then November just is just, you just want all the cozy things. Okay, and then the final month, December, um, I always like to do something kind of Christmassy. This year, I, for this year, I decided we are going to read a book that is mostly white on the cover. And I found that was actually harder, <laughs> harder to find books for than I imagined. But my recommendation is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. Honestly, I might reread this next December if I haven't already read it by then. Um, I've been wanting to reread this since I read it almost two years ago. This is a gothic horror story, which since reading this, I realized I really like. And I think I might like the reread of this more 
than my first time through. So that's kind of like a recommendation and what I might be reading. And then I also might be reading uh, Cinder Girl. This is a memoir of a girl that was in abusive ho an abusive home and then foster care and then eventually helping people that are in those situations. And like this was like the white-ish, yeah it, it looks pretty white on the camera I think. Um, but a lot of the other ones I have, they're like, have a white spine, but then the cover is mostly color. So good luck with some of these. So there is the 2022 Read Your Bookshelf Challenge. I am going to have a printable that I will leave linked below so you guys can print it out. I'm going to have the information on how to join Hey Reader so you can get in on the $100 gift certificate. And I will also have the details, but just leave a comment with a book stack emoji if you would like a book stack shirt. And then I will draw a winner for the Bookstack shirt uh, two weeks from today and I will comment on that winning comment so they know who it is and I will also put it up in my community tab. So there we go. That's all for today. Um, today is my last normal posting day and then starting on Wednesday, December 1st, I am going to be doing bookmas slash vlogmas. Um, and so I'm going to be doing a, hopefully, if this all works, I'm going to be doing a video a day from December 1st till the 24th. So if you guys aren't already, I would love it if you would subscribe so you don't miss any of those. Thanks for watching and thanks for joining in with the challenge.